Ooh, what's up, everybody? We got a wide receiver trade to talk about. And, of course, lineup help as we get ready for Fantasy Week 8 Thursday afternoon. I'm Adam Azer. Chris Towers is rocking out with his axe in the background over there. And Dave Richard just had his shirt unbuttoned earlier. A shame that he didn't keep it that way, but uh, you look more professional, Dave. What, How many what? likes for me to take off the button-down shirt? <laughs> Five. A thousand. No. If, you think we can get to a thousand? Have we ever? What's the highest amount of likes? I feel like we've gotten a to a thousand before on one of these. For a Thursday, I'm not sure we've gotten on a Thursday. Maybe not a Sunday, Thursday. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's aim for 400 today. 400 likes. Fine, 500. I'll uh, I'll show you what's under the shirt. <laughs> 500. Okay, let's talk. It's about just this it's trade. it's not that interesting. It's just another it's, shirt. It's yeah. just it's it's like uh, it's like Joey in. And friends, he's just wearing successive layers of shirts. Don't remember. Not a reference. You, you get that one? No, I don't. No, he's a, he wears of- all of Chandler's shirts, and then he's like, "I'm Chandler. Could I be wearing any oh, more shirts? Get more clothes? Yeah, yeah, yeah classic. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> all right, all right. Welcome to the show, everybody. Um, I just watched the episode where Chandler made out with Joey's girlfriend. It was really a big, big friend mistake. Bad friend. Uh, bad friend move. Yeah, bad friend. Were they really friends? They were friends. Let's talk about Kadarius Tony here. Uh, going to the Chiefs. Dave, your reaction, Jackson. Kadarius Tony, not friends with Brian Dable. Um, I, I think it's a move with the long term in mind for the Chiefs, but also something that can help them. If if Tony's hamstrings are okay, it could help him as soon as week nine. I, I like it for Kansas City. I think it adds just another guy who can make a play after the catch. I think that's what they were hoping for with Sky Moore. He hasn't involved. He hasn't evolved like uh, like we thought he would, or like he thought they would. I would say. And then Juju's great. He's made a lot of plays after the catch. MVS has been fine. He's made a couple of big plays. Mikael Hardman's been awesome. This is another piece, and the reason why I think it's a move for the future is that Tony's still on his rookie deal. MVS they've got under contract for two more years if they want to. Sky Moore's on his rookie deal. Juju and Hardman are free agents after the year. And I bet they would get to a point sooner than later where they realize, okay, Juju's helping us out now. But just imagine if we had Kadarius Tony running the routes that Juju Smith Schuster has been running and the breakaway plays that Juju's had. Imagine if Tony's running those. Sheesh, if he's healthy, he's awesome. So a lot of people are making mad rushes to stash Kadarius. I love it. I think that's a great move. I don't uh, I don't think that's a mistake but I'm not sure how soon he's going to be able to contribute to fantasy lineups or how long he'll be, he'll be able to stay on the field. But, you know, going from Daniel Jones to Patrick Mahomes, it's like going from the upper deck at the Super Bowl to the 50 yard line. You're, you're loving it. You're, you're, you know that it's going to work out better for him than had he stayed in New York. What's your take, Chris? I mean, like, I don't think he's just been faking injuries or anything. So he's got to get healthy first. Like, that's the biggest thing is the issue for Kadarius Tony has not been uh, talent. It's not been skill set. By all accounts, everybody on the Giants thinks he's a really talented player. But they haven't, you know, I, I just saw, I'm trying to find it. I just saw one of the Giants reporters. They basically said, okay, so it was Jordan Renan from uh, ESPN Kadarius Tony is a strange case. I've spoken with former plus current coaches about him over the past few months. Talent undeniable. Previous coaching staff thought he was fine when in the building. Problem was, could they trust him to put in the work when not under their supervision? It, this is this seems like a situation where there's no question that he's a talented player. It's just a question of whether, one, you can trust him to stay healthy. Two, put in the work when he's not healthy to get healthy. And three, put in the work to you know, become the kind of player that he can be. And it it reminds me of like early Devontae Parker. You heard a lot of similar criticisms from him, from the Dolphins. He had, you know, I think it was year three he finally broke out, but it was, um, actually I think it might've been year four. It took him a while. And it was similar things where it was just like, we know he's good. We just don't know if we can trust him to get to where we need him to be. And that seems to be the case with Kadarius Tony. So mid-season guy who hasn't played a single snap this season, can't stay healthy. My expectations yeah, for yeah. this year are, has he played? Yeah, a little bit. I, I honestly can't remember him being on the very, field. Very, very so little. I think the first two weeks of the 12 season. 12 snaps, 15 snaps, whatever it was. Yeah, be, yeah. The chances of him making an impact this year, I think are pretty slim. 
you know, I, I've stashed him in a couple of spots, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not expecting Kadarius Tony to step on the field in week nine and be a difference maker. He may not be on the field in week nine. Yeah, no, it's a long-term thing. Uh, I'll, I'll, okay. We got to answer some, uh, some questions for week eight, but you know, pick him up if you can. I dropped Mark Ingram for him. I, someone asked me, should I drop Kenyon Drake for him? Absolutely. You probably, you know, would you drop, here's one. Would you drop Michael Gallup for him? Yes. I don't think I would. Uh, what's the upside with Gallup? 1100 yards and eight touchdowns. No, what's the up? Yeah. I mean, I don't think he's, I don't think he's getting there. We're, we're in week seven. I would just, per per 17 games. You mean? Right, right. Yeah. No, I I think, uh, high end wide receiver three with big boom and and bus potential, which I don't think it's different than Kadarius Tony. So I'll take the guy who's currently healthy and has a role on his team. Yeah, and he actually saw a pretty decent amount of Jeff Okuda in week seven, and Okuda's really good, and I think that may have had a little bit to do with Gallup's struggles um, in week, uh, what do you have, zero catches on two targets. So uh, anyway, yeah, pick up Tony if you can. Last question on this, does this hurt Juju Smith-Schuster at all? Eventually it will. If Tony's healthy, there's no comparison on who's more explosive and who's but got more juice. different player you know couldn't he just be mvs and juju can still be juju i don't think he i think he's closer to juju than he is to mvs would, would you try to trade juju or i, I think it's a little I, we haven't seen anything from tony uh, i mean you know, I, I would hold yeah i would hold juju off. juju's a sell high if you can yeah yeah i think he's just a sell high regardless because like he's yeah. had a couple of long catch and runs the last couple of weeks that I don't really like, I don't think he's going to catch the ball 15 yards down the field and then outrun the defense every week. Like he has the last two weeks. So I still think there are limitations to Juju Smith Schuster that, you know, he's overcome lately, but he's probably more of a low end wide receiver too than what he's looked like lately. All right, let's answer some week eight questions. Let's set your lineups here. We're waiting for some injury news to come in. Um, I don't know what, what, Chris, what are the big injuries that you're tracking uh, here? How about this real quick? Michael Carter or Gabe Davis at flex? I would go with Gabe. Dave. Definitely Gabe. Chris, what are some of the big injuries we're tracking right now? Uh, I think the two biggest would probably be Debo Samuel and DK Metcalf who didn't practice yesterday. DK dealing with the knee injury, Debo with the hamstring, but you've also got like, Looks like DeAndre Swift's going to be back. James Conner is a pretty big one if he comes back. Chuba Hubbard hasn't practiced Wednesday or Thursday with the ankle injury. Uh, Alan Lazard hasn't practiced. So, yeah, there's some there's some big ones out there. Yeah, and of course, Mark Andrews. We're waiting yes. to see what's going to happen with Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman. They may not play. Dave, what are we going to do with Lamar Jackson tonight if one or both of those guys is out? You can lower the expectations a little bit, Adam, but you still know what the upside is. For somebody like Lamar Jackson, someone who runs the football, could get tons of numbers on the ground and and can still throw pretty well in a matchup that I think is favorable. You look at the secondary and how beat up it is for Tampa. P.J. Walker just had a good game against them for P.J. Walker. I I think it's no doubt that you've got to just stick with with our guy, LJ8. Okay. Um, Would you trade Stefan Diggs for Derrick Henry and Chris Godwin? Man, I, I think I would, but that's tough. It's tough to I give would. up a player as good as Diggs. You look at, but you're getting back Derrick Henry. Yeah, and Godwin I think, on top of it. Yeah, I, I think yes. I would rank Diggs over Henry rest of the season. But yeah, Godwin is a buy low for sure. Uh, if Rashad Bateman plays, would you play Bateman, Myers, or Pickens in half PPR? I definitely have Myers ahead of Bateman, and I might have Pickens as well. I, I definitely have Pickens ahead of him. Bateman's third for me on that list. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Debo, if he plays, Ramondre, Olave, or Swift. Wow. So you got a lot of uh, moving parts here, a lot of injury issues here. But who's the best one uh, in this group, guys? Full PPR. I'll say Olave. I think it would be Ramondre for me. Okay. Uh, By the way, um, the Jets are going to go with the hot hand. I don't know if we mentioned that. Jets are going to go with the hot hand at running back. I don't think I gave that news. Item that hopefully that will be Michael Carter. What happens if neither one is, has a hot hand? <laughs> and then they're probably not going to win. Um, all right, pick yeah. Two. I mean, I, I'm worried that offense is going to be really bad. Brees Hall was like everything for them the last, like, exactly. 
you're taking you're taking the Lamborghini off the off the lot here. Yeah. He 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 was the he might have been their best player. I think period. he was their best offensive player this year. He was oh. their best offensive player. Was he their best player? Period. Well, Quinn and Williams. It's Quinn and Williams, or or uh, or him, or Gardner. Yeah. Maybe. Um, yeah, there aren't close. a lot of there aren't a lot of teams where the best player is arguably the running back, but that was one of them. Right. Yeah, the other New York team too. Um, mm. From born blessed, or maybe their left tackle. Pick two in PPR: Foreman, Ayuk, Henderson, Gus Edwards, and then pick a tight end: Knox or Taysom. Uh, it's going to be Taysom at tight end. And I believe I've got Ayuk ranked over Foreman in PPR. Oh, we need two, though. Well, then I must have named him Ayuk and Foreman. You like Foreman? Yeah. Better than Edwards. Henderson is dealing with an illness, but if he plays, I think I prefer him to Foreman. Um, so I would go Ayuk and Henderson. Okay. We're sitting Gus. Uh, Melvin yeah. Gordon, Ayuk, Jamal Williams in the flex. What First of all, I don't want to. I don't want to be the one to say we're sitting Gus and, and have that be a blanket statement. Yeah. It really just comes down to who else you have. If if we knew for sure that Chuba was not going to play, I would definitely take Foreman ahead of him. Yeah. It's looking like it's trending in that direction. I'm willing to take that chance yeah. because even if even if Chuba plays, I think he's going to be a little more limited than he was last week when he was taking rushing down snaps away from Deontay Foreman. So I think I'm comfortable starting Foreman over Edwards at this point, but it's not to say that Edwards is a bad start. He's a worse start in full PPR because he's not going to catch many passes, if any. But I think he's going to have a pretty good game tonight. Now I'm just worried asking, about the only three days off. That's, I love that for him. I love it, actually. He's He just came back. He only played 23 snaps. He's going to be fresh. I'm worried about the three days off for the Bucks defense after they got hammered. By Foreman and Chuba Hubbard, I, I, I think that I think that you're going to see a a exciting, ah, exciting is that the right word? He's <laughs> he's going to be a thoroughbred tonight. You're going to see Gus Edwards have a good game. All right, what the question that's tonight? been on the screen now? Poor Brosy Brosum. Uh, Ayuk is the pick in non PPR. In non, I would go with Jamal Williams. What if Swift plays? Oh, I'm expecting Swift to play. I just I'm expecting Swift to have a, a somewhat more limited workload than he has uh, so far. This well, actually, I guess two of the games he's left with injuries, so probably hmm. not that dissimilar. But yeah, I, I think I would bet on Jamal Williams getting more touches than DeAndre Swift this week. Let's go rapid fire here for the next ten questions. Hold your barf bags, everybody. Robbie Anderson or Chase Edmonds, non PPR. There's got to be somebody on the waiver wire that's better, but if there's not, I think you just take your chances with Robbie. I think so too. Start three and stand. What's with all this non PPR? Where'd all the PPR people go? Montgomery, Connor, Singletary, <laughs> and I'm guessing Curtis Samuel. Uh, pick three. Curtis is the sit. Now it's uh, more interesting yeah. if it's Debo. Then yeah, if it's Connor. Debo, I'm sitting Connor. Uh, Singletary is interesting because there's that massive gap in his workload. Rapid fire. Sorry, rapid fire. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. What, so what's it the was bad, it was bad information. Don't worry about it. Okay. Nobody cares. Uh, um, Eckler's out. Oh, he's on yes, by. He's on by. You knuckle. Yes. <laughs> uh, Najee, Brian Robinson, <laughs> or Daryl Henderson. Assuming take... Daryl Henderson's healthy, I will start him. Assuming Henderson is healthy, I will start Brian Robinson. Okay. And whoa, wait a second. Mahomes <laughs> is out this week, guys. Huge news. What am I gonna do? Two what will three. we do without Gerald Everett? Hopkins, Higgins, Olave. Oh, hey man, that's oh, a real problem Olave. in like three of my leagues. <laughs> uh, what are we doing with this? Who are we sitting here? I think I'm sitting. Man, I think I'm, I'm sitting s- Higgins. I'm sitting Olave, but I don't feel good about it. Yeah. Okay. Mm, I, you Stop. know what? I do have Olave ranked lower than Higgins and Hopkins in PPR. So I agree with you after all. Next. Gus Edwards or James Conner, PPR? Uh, uh, that's a bus horn. I'd go with Connor. I wouldn't. I like us. I, I don't think Connor is particularly good anymore. Oh, yeah. I don't either, but I don't think any of the running backs there have been particularly good. You don't good think Eno Benjamin's going to have a role? I think, I mean, I, they always use multiple running backs. I, I, that's, that's less the concern. I, I think the Cardinals' offense is going to be better now with DeAndre Hopkins back. So I think that's going to mean more red zone opportunities and more goal line opportunities for Connor. And that's, that's what you're looking for. 
if Andrews is out, is Isaiah likely a must start or should I get someone else? I like him for DFS. I don't think I'd be ready to trust him uh, as like a top 15 guy. He, he, he would enter the streaming conversation. I'd rather have Otten. I'd rather have Harrison Bryant. But he's he would be someone that I would consider. Yeah, I, I think I'd rank him ninth. <laughs> Wow. 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 I, I just, I think he's a good player. He's his target per route run rate is like 0. 0.22, which is really solid for a tight end. So yeah, I <laughs> think, um, yeah, I, I think he'd be a top 10 guy for me. Okay. Non PPR. Pick You're not right, hold fire. on. Are you starting likely over Kyle Pitts? <sighs> yeah, I would. I thought you'd say that it would be unlikely. <laughs> no, it would be likely. Non PPR pick two Pollard Higgins Lamb Kirk or Cooks. Pollard is a must. Yeah, Pollard's. I believe I let me check my Lamb Higgins rankings. I have Higgins just ahead of Lamb. I just made up a song. Higgins. Higgins. Okay. Uh, Gus Edwards or DeAndre Swift? Yeah, you got to make that call. Swift. Swift. Well, you know. What if he if he's practicing in full on Wednesday and Thursday, I think that's a really good sign for Sunday. Okay. Pittman, Hines, or Gus Edwards, PPR, and then Carr or Gino. And, yep, I've got clean underwear today, so thumbs up. Thank you, David. <laughs> that's a thing? That's a thing, yeah. Oh, gosh. I'll go with Pittman. <laughs> what did I miss? Uh, Pittman is my PPR flex. One time I took a shower and didn't ch- and didn't and and put on the same underwear. I don't know why. I just don't know. Why did you one tell time. people that? You didn't it's have to. Yeah, because Jamie asked. Okay. Why, why is Jamie up? asking? Because I, I was wearing the same clothes as I, but because I, I took a shower, I put <laughs> oh the same clothes God. back on, but I had only what, worn. What is happening to us? I don't you know. This is I actually think. something I struggle with because I record like FFT and five later on today. Yeah. And I'm always like, should I change my shirt? Does no. anyone care? No. No. no one cares. Yeah. Well, apparently, I mean, apparently, someone cares. Well, underwear, yes. The clothes, no. Your your shirt, you're fine. What well, car or Geno Smith, guys? Uh, car. car. Okay. How about, um, let's see. Getting some fresh questions here. Russell Wilson or Trevor Lawrence? <laughs> I have Trevor Lawrence one spot higher. I've got Russ higher. Okay. This is gross. Just go commando. Now, that's gross. Taysom Hill or Dalton Schultz, PPR? I'll go with Dalton Schultz. I will, too. TMI, enough dimwits. Dulcich or Pitts? Seriously. I don't think you can ever uh, have Dulcich. enough dimwits. I'm, I'm sorry, Dulcich. Pitts. Uh, the what appeal you... to me with Pitts is that he's a touchdown or bust tight end. I don't think he's going to get a lot of targets and catches. I think Dulcich can. People have been asking and about the shirt, Chris. It's a uh, Santerse Cangrejeros jersey. It's a Puerto Rican baseball team that uh, it's a Roberto Clemente jersey. They had a oh, uh, cool Roberto Clemente and Willie Mays on the same outfield during the 1954 season. How about that? That's <laughs> very cool. It's pretty good. Uh, DJ Moore or Devante Smith? Devante. We're not there with DJ Moore yet. I traded he had one catch for 10 yards in the second half last week. They were winning. <laughs> they were. That is true. They ran the ball a lot in the fourth quarter. I traded Zeke and Bateman for Pollard and Garrett Wilson. I'm two and five. Congratulations. I mean, you're going to, it helps you this week, so it's worth it. Yeah. You need a win. Yeah. This Pitts is Pollard's t- audition, guys. This is his chance. Nah. He's been yeah. I really, I, Zeke I, all year. We've been saying this for like three years. I just, I, I think they're going to go right back to Zeke no matter what. I don't, I wish they wouldn't. Yeah. But I just, I think that's what they are. Yeah, I think so, but but you know, going to Zeke is a little. Like, Pollard has a pretty decent role now, and he's even had some some work near the end. Like he didn't get in; he had a couple of carries or yeah. opportunities last week to get in. Sure did. That's like three straight. I mean, two or three straight. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's just that's not what you usually see. He's got a bigger role than I thought. Pitts or Otten? Otten, especially if it's PPR. <laughs> I would go with Pitts. I decided this week I'm just going to keep Pitts like 12th, but never talk about him. And now I've had to answer like five questions. Oh, always, always. Uh, Aaron Jones or CD Lamb? Ooh, What's the format? Nice. Half PPR. You and half PPR. I, it wasn't, <laughs> I'm, that's not my league. 
Are you sure? Uh, I will probably lean toward Jones. I'll go Jones in PPR or none or half. Let's check up on our likes. We only have 67. I just hit oh, like on, 68. Who would you rather be trapped in a house with, Annabelle or Chucky? That's a good question. I don't know I'm, enough about Annabelle. I'm going to say Chucky. Annabelle's creepier. Chucky's a little wimp. I feel like I feel like I could take Chucky. Like last week, we had to run away from Michael Myers or Jason or Freddy, and those were all losing propositions. But Chucky, I think I could, I could handle Chucky. So... Just gonna, and 63% of people say Chucky as well. Uh, Halloween ends, by the way. Whew. Yikes. Alec Pierce or Josh Reynolds, PPR? Yeah, the decision uh, could be made for you by injury. If Reynolds doesn't play, you have to stay yeah. up here. But if Reynolds plays, I'm starting him. I think I would too. Russ or Dalton? Russ for me. Yep, I have Russ one spot higher. When golf do I get to Stafford. when do I get to talk about Sam Ellinger? Golf or Stafford? Stafford. Stafford. Okay, Dave, go ahead. Um, I get to do it now. Can't wait. He looked my phone. He he looked like uh, a Pro Bowl quarterback in the preseason. Was doing a great job through with velocity when he needed to. Had good touch. Um, had some semblance of RPO passing. Look for him to use the tight ends quite a bit in this offense. And look for him to use uh, the receivers as short area targets. He is not a bad number two fantasy quarterback this week. I can run a little bit. And when you're looking for a, a QB two, that's that's valuable. It is. Uh, and he's going to help that offensive line look better, too, because he can navigate the pocket better than Matt Ryan can at his age. Uh, is James Conner a buy low? Do we see him as more valuable than Brian Robinson in PPR? I do, yeah. He, he's, I think they're really close right now, and, and this week could further separate them and keep Connor higher, so sure. There's certainly more upside with, with Connor. Robinson's not just not going to catch passes. I think that's the issue. I, the he problem caught is, two I think, last week, though. I think Antonio Gibson's a better runner and a better pass catcher than the other two guys in that backfield. I, I, I get that their coaching staff just doesn't seem to like him as much, so it doesn't matter, but he just looks better than anyone else they have. Well, he has Gibson. the last two weeks. I mean, I don't know yeah, if they really has. him or what, but he's definitely had some juice with uh, Brian Robinson. He's fresher. Yeah. yeah he's and Robinson fresher. was doing That's some true, of the yeah. things last week that got Gibson benched in the first place. He was hesitating on his runs. He was going East West. He, he wasn't quite the hammer that he was previously. At the very least, let's just get McKissick out of here. He's not helping anybody. He's not getting any targets, any catches anyway. Yeah. Try to read this question without thinking about unlimited breadsticks. Uh, I traded Olave, right? Does it not? <laughs> like, that is such a team name right there. Olave Godwin. Uh, would you trade Olave? This is a good question here. Yeah. I, you know, in non or half, I would rather have Olave, I think. Um, but in full PPR, how do you guys feel about this whole sitch? Olave for Godwin. Uh, they they are dead even on the trade chart in non PPR cool. and in full PPR. Godwin is a point ahead of them. Yeah, I'd They're rather have Godwin, close. but yeah, it's tough. Wouldn't you make the case? And I agree with you, Chris. But couldn't not? Wouldn't you? Couldn't you make the case that you'd rather have the faster, healthier receiver with the younger quarterback than the older? <laughs> well, not back oh, at 100% the quarterback. That, that's the thing is like, if you just play it as the younger quarterback, then yeah, it sounds better for Chris Olave, but that younger quarterback is a 33 year old Andy Dalton. Okay. So fine. like, I guess everybody's a younger I, quarterback. When part of it is Brady, like, I take that back. You'd rather like, it's a, it's as much a bet on one. Chris Godwin's just a really good player in his own right, but it's also a bet on like Tom Brady figuring it out. And there's no guarantee he will. He's a 45 year old. Like that's, that's really tough to do. He's it's not that old for real life. He's the best. Look at him. He's but old. For football, he's he's very old. Um, <laughs> he's fine. So he's fine. I'm, he's I'm reaching fine. that point now where I'm like, I talk. I'm 34 now, and I talk about like a 31 year old. I'm like, what? like Adam Thielen. He's 32. He's finished. Yeah. He might as well retire. He's useless. And I'm like, well, Man. if you were a professional athlete, you'd say, yeah. you'd think the same about yourself. I, yeah, you'd be bad. I would not start myself in fantasy. I, you know, I, my concern for Olave is uh, Michael Thomas comes back, you know, in week fi- in week twenty, and right. Andy Dalton still <laughs> never. Up, but he could come back as early as this week. I probably not, but he could come back. Uh, and then Dalton, like Dalton, threw for a lot of yards last week, but 
prior to that, he really didn't. And and it was partially I, a result of him throwing two pick sixes and the fact that they were chasing it. points. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I really like Winston better for Olave. I, I think I would just keep Olave. He's so freaking good. Yeah, he's really, really good. I don't think he's going to fade like the other rookie wide receivers had. I, I think he's going to stick. You guys, I'm assuming, feel that way about a lot of Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have Mark Andrews. If I guess if he doesn't uh, play, who would you start? Gasicki, Irv Smith, Knox, Bryant, Johnson? I believe I have Smith ranked the highest, but I'm starting to warm up to Harrison Bryant. Would you like to hear a Harrison Bryant stat, everybody? Yeah. The quarterback who has thrown the highest percentage of passes to tight ends this year has been Lamar Jackson. The <laughs> second quarterback to throw the most, second most targets to his tight end this year has been Harrison Patrick Bryant. Mahomes. <laughs> the quarterback who's thrown the third highest amount of targets to his tight ends this year has been Geno Smith, J- Jacoby Brissett. Okay. <laughs> 30.2% of Brissett's targets have gone to tight ends. Wow. It's been Najoku mostly, a little bit to Bryant, but Najoku's not there. Bryant steps in. I would not be shocked if he had a very good game. He is in my top 12 this week. He will be in my top 12. He is not currently in my top 12. Dulcich de Leche or Taysom Hill? Um, Unless I, it's not PPR. I do have Taysom Hill ranked higher, but I don't I don't like it. I'm not happy not? about it. If you don't like it, then why go with it? Because I, I think Dulcich is Dulcich is in a bad offense. I don't necessarily trust his role. Um his route participation rate actually went down this week, uh, in week two. So I just I just think it's a bad situation. Uh, why do we call it route participation? It's um, route run. It's a route run rate. Faster either way. I, I think I use them interchangeably. Route run rate. I like the I like the alliteration. Thank you. Uh, would you start ETN or Godwin over any of these guys in PPR? St. Brown, Camara, Hopkins, Chubb. Ooh, uh, I think now I have. Wow. Okay, I have ETN behind Chubb. That's the closest one for me. Um, I would start Urban Godwin Apprentice over with the team. I would go Godwin over uh, Hopkins. I do have Godwin so one he spot probably there. took he probably took Kamara and Chubb with two of his first three picks, and then maybe ETN St. Brown Godwin with his next three. Hopkins in round eight. Yeah, this is great drafting. Yeah, it's worked he, out well. He, he's nailed it, and everybody stayed healthy. Cheers, Bourbon Apprentice. Gus Edwards or Kareem Hunt? Gus. Gus. Pick two, McCaffrey, Fournette, Swift. I would sit Swift. I would also sit Swift. Uh, do I trade Kelsey, Brady, and Gabe Davis? <sighs> Whoa. Ooh, 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 whoa, whoa. Or Murray, Hopkins, and Debo. Oh, okay. Uh, who do you have at tight end? Like that. No, I don't like it. I, I, th- I think I like it in a vacuum, but like if you're starting Tyler Conklin or something, then no, I don't think you can. I believe the trade chart's going to favor the Kelsey side significantly. 31 for him. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm keeping Kelsey. Who would you guys rather have rest of season, Brady or Kyler? Kyler for me. Kyler. I was just thinking about this. Do you think that Reese's peanut butter cups were were Halloween colors before Halloween was a thing? I don't know when Halloween, when trick or treating started. Halloween's been a thing way longer than Reese's. Candy came out in I think nineteen twenty eight. You think they made it? You think they made it because it was Candy came out in in nineteen twenty eight. The, yep. In 1927, there was no candy. No candy. Oh, that's why there was the Great Depression. Pizza's Pizza's Pizza. 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 Not, not candy in general. That particular one. Do you think when they came out, they were like, "Hey, we should, we should get in this Halloween thing and be orange and, you know, brown or black." Oh, I have no idea. I, yeah. no, I wouldn't even know how to, to start to have an opinion about that. <laughs> think about it. Uh, single. About that, the, the inventor of the Reese's peanut butter cup was the shipping foreman for Milton S. Hershey. Oh, hmm. about that. Uh, single Chocolatey world. Singletary or Mostert? Mostert. Most. 
And Olave, Godwin, or Cooper? Godwin. I have Olave ranked higher. Remember when we used to have that O'Reilly Auto Parts sponsor on the radio mm-hmm. show? Oh, 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 Olave. Wait, right, Dave? We could do that. We can do it. You know, you complimented my alliteration, so I will say that that was just a wonderful callback. Thank, Thank you, you for bringing back memories of our radio show. Sick reference, Adam. <laughs> I always tell people you have the best references. Thank you. I do. Too. I mean, you can't reference like 20 year old sitcoms like Chris can, but you're you're doing great. I do not reference 20 year old sitcoms. I reference 30 year old sitcoms. Have PPR send Adams for Pierce Higgins or Pittman yeah. and Brian Robinson. Damian Pierce. Wait. Uh, <laughs> I was messing I with the thing. I don't. Okay, so you get Adams for one of those three <laughs> and Brian Robinson. And you certainly go Higgins over Pittman. That's not even a question. Yeah, it's a question of Pierce versus Higgins for me. Um, Would you do I it think, anyway? I think so. I think the downgrade from Adams to Higgins isn't in a. Uh, I just, I don't think Brian Robinson's ever going to be much more than like a touchdown or bust RB3. So I don't know how much better he makes your lineup. I think it's pretty team dependent, but like I wouldn't feel I'm not going to feel good about my team if I'm relying on Brian Robinson. So basically the drop off on the trade chart from Adams to Higgins is 10 points. That's right around where Robinson is right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the fair. Trade chart. So like if you're getting Robinson and Higgins and it looked like he was getting somebody else on top of that. Pierce. No, he's got yeah, it's just two. He's getting yeah, Robinson and either Higgins or Damian Pierce. Wait a minute. Higgins okay. or no, this isn't you can get do you can get Damian Pierce and Higgins? No. You no. can get Damian Pierce <laughs> and Robinson, or you can get Higgins and Robinson for Adams. Okay. So I personally would rather have Damian Pierce and have I would too. Go. Yep. Me too. Would you make that trade? Adams yep. for Damian Pierce and Brian Robinson. Yes. Okay. Especially if you're a little thin at RB. He lost Brees Hall, it says on the bottom. So oh, Eno Benjamin's his only bench running back. So you got to do it. Some depth. trade you got to make. Okay. Yeah. That's I mean, nice Pierce, is, Pierce is very good. He's had a pretty easy schedule, Damian Pierce, but he's also broken the most tackles in, in the NFL, uh, I believe. When will we see pumpkin pie spice Reese's? No, thank you. Brady or Dak? Out. Dak. Who did that? Chris, you did that? That was me. I'm sorry. I you hit the it? button on accident. <laughs> What, uh, show I would go with I hated the question. No, I would go. I I have Brady one spot higher. I actually do hate that question now that I see my rankings. Kate Otten, Evan Ingram, or Greg Dulcich? GD. That's Greg I would Dulcich. go with Ingram. Ah man, he makes me nervous. Oh yeah, I, you'd never Chris, feel good about relying on Evan Ingram. Chris, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm on your team this week. I do not understand why the other guys are so high on Greg Dulcich. I so, I just don't get it. Because I think like, the Broncos are going to end up having to throw. He's a nice, why? easy, short target who can make plays after the catch. He's why got a good feel for when he's open. Why are they going to have why? to throw? Because their running backs are slow. Well, okay, but it's not like the Jaguars are going to run up the score on them. They could. They Against Denver? <laughs> well, I mean, they do. Yeah, I, I just think they're, uh, that offense isn't good. And, like, Russell Wilson's third option at this point doesn't really make me feel good. He got nine targets last week from a backup quarterback. We have no idea if that's like Jerry Judy also got more targets than Cortland Sutton last week. We don't think that's going to continue with Russell Wilson back. So I just, I'm not buying Dolchik, Dulcich. I, I actually don't. Is it Dulcich? Dulcich. 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 Um, I'm not buying his, uh, you know, the nine targets last week. So I just, I just, I don't know. He's fine. All right, Kyler or Tua? Oh, I think they're both like top six quarterbacks, top eight quarterbacks, but I have Kyler higher. I feel better about Kyler. They're back-to-back for me as top eight quarterbacks. I saw somebody reference this on Twitter, and I can't remember who, but – oh, my God, their backup quarterback. I just blanked. Colt McCoy. (laughs) Um, That Kyler's running has, like, gone up as – Colt McCoy got close to coming off IR and then was activated off IR. I think he's been active three weeks now. And that's coincided with Kyler running a lot more. And that makes me think that 
when Colt McCoy is available, they're more comfortable um, putting Kyler Murray in rushing situations, which is huge for his value. He's got, I think, 30-plus carries over the past four games, something like that, 33. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. I thought I it was think like, you were going to get a Colt McCoy reference. No, week. I thought you were going to say, I thought it was like, a, well, he's worried about Colt McCoy taking his job. No, 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 not that. Just that they're, he only had 12 carries the first three games. He has 33 over the last two, that's or great. last four. Christian Kirk, Brandon Ayuk, or Wandale Robinson, half PPR? Kirk. I think Kirk is my pick too. Uh, if uh, Debo were out, would you go Ayuk? It gets yes, closer. Yes, All right. I do have Ayuk higher in full PPR. Maybe I should just say Ayuk. Dylan is uh, needing two here. Hopkins, Godwin, Pittman, pa- oh, easy. I think it's easy. Uh, you guys Pollard, are right. Pollard yeah. is the easy one. He's a top 15 player overall for me, top 12. Hopkins. I think it's probably Hopkins over Ramondre. I have in my flex rankings no to Ramondre. 17, 18, 19 is Ramondre, Godwin, Hopkins. So I do have Ramondre ranked higher. Okay. Um, bum, 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 bum. Is Irv Smith a must start? As Arizona has a tendency to shut down the opposing wide receiver one, do you think they're going to, they, are they going to do that to Justin Jefferson? <laughs> Absolutely not a must start. No. Um, well, he's a can start. He's a tight end who has a pulse. I have some notes about that. Uh, obviously, the, so Arizona gives up the second most fantasy points. There have been four tight ends who have had four to six targets against the Cardinals, and that's exactly what Irv Smith has had in four straight games. Those tight ends had 30 yards, 61 yards, 34 yards, and 32 yards. Uh, Juwan Johnson, though, did have two touchdowns. So if you get four to six targets, you're not guaranteed a great game or anything like that, and that's what Irv Smith gets most weeks, uh, four weeks in a row. Adam, I'm going to hit this comment just so this guy can stop posting. Oh, I know, right? Yeah, thank you. Andrews played 88% of the snaps last week. I think he ran a pretty much normal route share. If he plays, he should have his normal role. Okay, thank you. Now, question for you, Lending Hand. What should we do with our stocks right now? What are you thinking? Are the GDP? Yeah, you let us know. Uh, Adam, I think you need to ask that question about 20 more times. Uh, Okay, good idea. Gus or Deontay Foreman in full PPR? Foreman. Yeah, I'd go Foreman. Okay. Um, Thank you. Let's see. Kyron (laughs) Williams and Michael Carter rest of the season. What do you think about them? Oh, you got to say Carter. Uh, It's just in in general. What do you think about them separately? Dave, you take Carter. Chris, you take Kyron Williams. You've got to be worried about Carter being anything better than what he was last year there were moments last year where he looked really good i feel like those moments came when zach wilson wasn't the quarterback so as long as wilson's the quarterback i think it's going to hamper the running backs it i think carter probably is a little bit more of an explosive not even a little bit he's more explosive than james robinson at this point i think he's a number three running back rest of season we don't know what kyron williams is going to be there is potential that williams could be uh, a number one guy Chris, you could let me know if there's potential for him to be that, but he could also just be, you know, five snaps a game for the Rams. Yeah. I mean, he's a five foot nine, 195 pound running back who ran a four, six, five. Obviously, that's not everything, but he's also he's un, a fifth round pick who had surgery for a high ankle sprain in the preseason, basically hasn't gotten any practice reps since then. I just, I think it's very unlikely Kyron Williams does anything. He's a pass catching back. He was regarded as one of the top. Pass catching backs in the draft. Uh, I'm not sure he's going to be more than that. Uh, and that the Rams have produced, I believe they've yeah. still produced the fewest PPR points for running back so far this season. So it's it's not really a, a good situation either. Chuba Hubbard not practicing today. So that's getting interesting there. Tua or NFC player of the week, Daniel Jones? <laughs> Tua. Tua. <laughs> uh, Juwan Johnson or the touch the feel of Otten? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 I do have Jawan Johnson ranked slightly higher, but uh, I'm worried that everybody's going to bite on Jawan Johnson after he had two touchdowns in like the last eight minutes in garbage time last week. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who was that pitcher on the A's, Cotton? What was his first name, Chris? Uh, Jarrell Cotton? Yeah, maybe, yeah. That sounds familiar. We always used to sing the touch, the feet. Yeah. Anyway, Jerry Judy or Curtis Samuel? Judy. Um, I think I would go with Curtis Samuel. That's Deontay close. Johnson or Tyler Boyd? I actually have Jerry Judy once by her. Sorry. Uh, Deontay Johnson. I'm going to be the last person who believes in Deontay Johnson, I guess. Not yep. me. Bye-bye, Deontay. R.I.P. Tyler oh. Boyd. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, it's also still pretty, alive. It's also a brutal matchup for Deontay. Not on my fantasy teams. It's not. Uh, pick one, Mostert or uh, Mostert? Mostert. Yeah. My gosh. Don't call Gus a bust. Your cat uh, has a mustache. Hold on. Let me let me get the Mostert stat. Uh, he has 14 to 18 carries in four straight games. There have been four running backs who have 14 to 18 carries against the Lions, and all four of them have scored at least one rushing touchdown this year. Book it. And he's getting involved in the passing game. Like, yeah, I, I think Raheem Mostert, if he can stay healthy, he's a top 20 running back rest of the season. Okay. Daniel just called us gurus, and now he needs two. Rondale, Rondale, Sutton, Mooney, Reynolds, PPR. Sutton? That's the easy one. Yeah. And Rondale versus Wandale is tough and not just saying it. Uh, Wandale. I'll take, I, will take, I will take Wandale. Magic Wandale. Team name Tuesday on a Thursday. Um, let's see. Let me, I haven't read this, so I haven't proofread this worst type of loss. A subbing a player last second cost you points. B scoring the second highest points of the week and playing the highest score. C your team is just bad. and watch you lose every week. A is, than, a is the worst. The a most is painful. The worst. Oh, yeah. the worst. Yeah. Oh, feel Especially like, cause like you have the, the one player and it's, it's fine if you like are going back and forth, but I did this last week. I can't remember what it was, but I, I made a switch. It was, Curtis Samuel, I started ahead of DJ Moore in one of my leagues last week, and I, I hadn't even considered it until, like, I think we were in the stream, and I let you and Frank talk me into it or something, and it, it blew up in my face. <laughs> Have you ever made a last-minute change, and it made you win? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's great. Oh, that's an awesome feeling. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Gus Edwards can't start Zeke. He's probably not going to play. Um. So I guess it's Gus or Thielen. That's... If it is, then I like Thielen. But it looks like he can. Yeah. I it looks know. like he's got a choice between Gus and Zeke, and then whoever he doesn't choose, that person can go in the flex. Uh, Zeke's not going to play, so it's Gus and Thielen. Yeah. Do not drop DK Metcalf. No. And start Gino over Davis Mills. And do I drop Young Way Koo for Brett Maher? Sure. Sure. <laughs> Real time with Brett Maher. Team name Tuesday. I am just crushing it right now. Sure. Is Kyle Pitts a hold or a drop? I just acquired him in a 10-team league, and I have one extra roster spot now because I made a two-for-three trade, and I'm probably going to cut him in a 10-team league. I just – I can't. You can, though. It's easy. I can't. No, I can't. I can't. Look, I can't tell you not to, but I would not do it. Like, I might start TJ Hawkinson over Kyle Pitts this week. Well, I, you've got but, sure. if you have Goddard, there's no reason to hold Pitts. Agreed. Well, to cut <sighs> Pitts, you're not gonna get anything in trade for him. Right. By the way, how about this routine name? The Drizzlin Pitts. I don't know what that means. You've never heard Drizzlin? No. <laughs> no, but I have to go. So well, Chris, you, know. uh, you could take over. You ready, Chris? Good. Uh yeah. Yeah. My wife just called me. I'm texting her back, and now I can take over. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Go Chris, away. Goodbye. Football today. Go, go take care of your children. All right. Bye, guys. You think they're more important than us. <laughs> Fine. What you got, Chris? All right. Non PPR. Someone dropped Pitts. Should I claim him and drop Gallup? I already have Andrews and Kittle. That's a situation where no, you don't. There's there's not really any upside there. The only thing I can think of is, do you want to keep your league mates from getting Pitts? That, yeah. That, but that, that would be only, the other. The thing. only reason to do that would be because then it makes it harder for them to feel the tight end each week. Yeah. It's not because Pitts is suddenly going to erupt into a, you know, six catch hundred yard monster. It's, I think that ain't can. happening. He probably won't, but he can. 
he's he, so talented in a, in a different simulation he's <sighs> dominating i hate this reality Damian Pierce, Kenneth Walker, Ramondre Stevenson, and Tony Pollard sit one. Jeez. Yikes! Yikes! It's Ramondre for me. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I, it's not a knock against him. He's a top twelve running back or top fifteen mm-hmm. running back. It's just that the other guys, they, the other guys catch passes is really what it comes down to. Except Kenneth Walker doesn't, but he's, a, I think, a more explosive version of Damian Pierce. He's, he's so awesome. Um, Gus or Connor at RB two? I have Gus ranked higher. One running back, one flex, half PPR. Daryl Henderson, Gus Edwards, Jamal Williams. Uh oh. Gus is my. I'm here if you are. You hear me? I don't know what's going on. My internet just froze. Yeah, mine did too. Okay. I think it's the internet just, just died just for. Maybe for everybody, the internet. Just oh no, the tubes got tied. All right, so I got, Gus, I got Gus Edwards, Daryl Henderson, Jamal. There, uh, I'll take Gus and Wandale. Okay. Uh, let's see. Cook, Swift, Walker, Etn. Pick three in non PPR. This is another tough one. Yeah. I think I'm sitting Swift in non PPR. I think I am too. All right. Are we thinking Atlanta is going to start the rookie Desmond Ritter? Is the no. rookie? Is that your hope for Pitts in London? I, I don't it, think so. It's it's not going to happen as soon as I thought it would because the Falcons remain competitive, and I don't think that changes anything for Pitts. I don't think they're going to say, "Well, we've got this rookie quarterback. Let's start throwing it sixty percent of the time." They're not doing that. I hate it. Schultz, Dulcich, Irv Smith, uh, Harrison Bryant, or Kate Otten. I will start Dulcich. I have Schultz ranked highest, but I don't feel great about it. We got a lot of he tight looks, end questions. He looks miserable. Oh yeah, Slow, no, I, can't he, change direction. He looks. Like, he looks like the last year that Jason Witten played for the Cowboys. That's what I it reminds yes. me of when I watch him play. That's a fantastic call. Uh, Kyle Pitts or Kate Otten? Otten. Pittman or Gus Edwards? Pittman. Rest of season, how do you rank these three? Jonathan Taylor, Nick Chubb, or Josh Jacobs? Rest of season, I will say Jacobs one, which is crazy. Nah, you know what? Chubb one, Jacobs two, Taylor three. But make no mistake about it, we're talking about three top eight fantasy running backs. Yeah, I mean, I I think Jacobs is... It might be too early to say he's in the discussion for RB1, but the workload that he's had so far this year, I mean, he has 84% of the RB touches for the Raiders, which is the highest of any player in the league. That's that's just, we didn't account for, I, I feel like if we didn't account for this possibility enough that this team, because the Patriots have consistently been like in the top eight over the last five seasons, at least the past five seasons. I haven't looked further in total PPR points for running backs. It's just, it's always like three or four different guys. That's right. What if just one guy gets it? All of a sudden, that guy looks really awesome. So. And so what do you think McDaniel realized? He realized that Jacobs is his best running back, yeah. and he's a pretty good pass catcher. Don't take this guy off the field. It's not going to really harm your long-term outlook if you run him into the ground this year. Yeah, that's, that's he's a in big contract part of it. Here, Here's the piece of advice I would give. If you've got Jacobs on your team, it's awesome. Write it out. Go get Zamir White. Put him on the bench. White is a good running back. Mm-hmm. Who uh, he will he be as good as Jacobs? No, but he could be seventy percent of Jacobs, and that's still really good for fantasy. Yeah. Would you drop Alec Pierce for Kyron Williams? No. Start Kirk Cousins or Lamar Jackson. I still love the upside for Lamar. I would start Lamar. Uh, we already got that one. <laughs> that question's just a humble brag. Oh, I think that's the guy with all the running backs. I agree. Yeah. Uh, trade Ramondre Stevenson and Miles Sanders. Which tar- wide receiver would you target in a non PPR league? Start with Cooper Cup and work your way down. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be one of the high end guys. Yeah, you're not trading him for Mike. E- you're not trading those two for Mike Evans. Would you do it for Devonte Adams? I don't think I would. Uh, Jamar Chase. I think I might. I would think like a Monroe St. Brown and something. That would also be Although non-PPR or, hurts. What's wrong Brown. with just trading Ramondre 
Yeah. Straight up for Olave. I Bobby would try Smith. to trade Miles Sanders if I could. Okay. You know, if I could get Amari Cooper for Miles Sanders or Michael Pittman for Miles Sanders, I would tr- I would try to do that too. So on the trade chart, the only receivers that I think are better than Ramondre and Sanders combined in non PPR are Cup and Jefferson. Makes sense. I might throw Tyreek Kill and stuff on Diggs changed. in there, but yeah, it's close. You could. You could. Uh, oh, I accidentally clicked this one. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, who should I not start this week out of Ramondre, Mixon, Chubb, or Kamara? I'm not I'm starting s- Ramondre. Yeah, I'm sitting Ramondre, but all, all four of those guys are top 10. Awesome. That's, that's one of those, oh, this is so hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, Another humble brag. Yeah, exactly. Good going, uh, OG. Good, good. Mike Thomas or Brandon Ayuk? I assume rest of season, Michael Thomas or Brandon Ayuk? I don't know when Thomas is coming back, and it's such a weird situation because they should have put him on IR. They never did. This is I believe third this year in a row. This game, yeah, I I can't feel great about Michael Thomas anymore. But if you cut him, all it takes is one day the Saints wake up and say Michael Thomas is back. He's going to play, or they trade him. You've got to at minimum hang on to him through the trade deadline. So you're hanging on to him till November first. We will reevaluate at that point. Hit that like and subscribe. Exactly. Thank you, J Metz. Taysom Hill or TJ Hawkinson? J Metz knows how to get his questions picked. Mm-hmm. I like Hawkinson if it's PPR, Hill if it's non PPR. He says it's half point PPR. I will still go Hawkinson. Foreman or Michael Carter in half PPR this week? Deontay. Oh, yeah. Stop it's me if you right. disagree. No, I, I that one's really close. I think uh, half PPR, I probably would go with Deontay, yeah. Uh, let's see. Henderson, Pollard, or Miles Sanders in PPR? Rank them. I, Pollard's clear number one this week. Pollard's clear number one. Sanders clear number two. I am not a fan of Henderson. I definitely don't love Henderson, but, you know, it's, the the workload's probably going to make him a top 20 guy. Um Damien Harris or James Robinson this week? Let's go PBR. with PBR. Let's go with Robinson here. Uh, Flex Montgomery or Tyler Boyd? In half PPR. I think this is a tough one. And uh, I'd be tempted to start Montgomery because I think he's got a better chance to score. Taking a chance on Brady tonight or Dalton versus Vegas on Sunday? How, how I, wild is it that Brady is someone you're taking a chance on? Yeah, I, I don't like it at all. And I thought that Brady. Uh-oh. And it's letting us down again. Ah, sorry. Um, I thought Brady looked great last week. I'm going to take a chance on him over Dalton because I think the upside with Dalton isn't really that great. Yeah. I know he, he, I know Dalton's coming off of a great game. Look eh, at his games prior. A good game for fantasy. Yeah. Look at Dalton's games prior. That's what the Saints want him to do. They want him to yeah. take care of the ball, a couple of deep shots. It's different with Brady. The Bucks want Brady to throw. He's a gigantic component of their offense. We just got some news in on the on the Bucks. It looks like Julio Jones. Um, I guess it's questionable for him. Yep. Gage is out. How many snaps have the Bucks had? Those two receivers. This is trivia. This isn't news. It's from Jenna Lane. She usually delivers news. Uh, Gage, Julio, Evans, Godwin. How many snaps have they been on the field together at the same time this year? I'm going to say seven. Four. Yeah. Four right. snaps all year. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know. Like, is is Tom Brady not 100%, you know, the guy he was two years ago or last year even? Yeah, I think that's probably fair. But it's also like he's missing – three interior starting lot offensive linemen. He's had a bunch of injuries. Chris Godwin hasn't been hundred percent yet. Like there is still room for Tom Brady to be a top five quarterback for fantasy. If things start to get a little better, he's got to get more comfortable with his offensive line. Yeah. Because he's getting rid of the ball. There are times where he's getting rid of the ball so quick that it, it just doesn't behoove the offense. Yep. And there are times when he does have time and he recognizes it and Sometimes he just can't make a decision on where to go with the football. And then other times he does, and it's his receivers. This was the case last week. The receivers let him down. Yeah. Evans had that bad drop. He had another drop later in the game. Godwin, there was a deep throw that Godwin really should have had 
it would have been nice. He didn't have it. So it, it's it's a lot of wonkiness going on with that whole Tampa Bay offense. Friermuth, Irv Smith, or Jawan Johnson, full PPR. Friermuth. I've got him as a top five guy this week. Me too. Rondale Moore, drop him to pick up Kadarius Tony. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Nice work. I think it's, I think it's fine. Uh, Superflex, 2QB, D- Geno Smith or Daniel Jones. Does Jones have big upside against the Seahawks? Uh, he's got some upside against the Seahawks. I think Geno's got more upside against the Giants. Pick two, Ramondre Stevenson, Tony Pollard, Gus Edwards, Michael Pittman, or Christian Kirk in non-PPR? The first two. I love you too, RP. Grade the trade. Hopkins, Fournette, Gus for Swift and Justin Jefferson. Wow. Mm-hmm. 40, 48. That's really, that's really, I think it's really a, close. I think it's close, but I think I like it for you, JG. I think getting, yeah, it really is going to come down to how much Swift plays moving mm-hmm. forward. And if he stays healthy for a while, you will love that you made this trade. I just worry, like there were there were some quotes from Dan Campbell in the preseason about like we need to limit DeAndre Swift's workload in practice yeah. and in preseason to to keep him healthy. And he got hurt in week two, got hurt again in week three with a different injury. And it's just like, is this guy going to be able to stay healthy enough to to be a fifteen touch per game guy? He can still be an RB two with ten to twelve touches, but is he? pre-2021 Austin Eckler, you know, rather than the last two seasons. I think that's like the the range of outcomes. Uh, did we do this one, DJ Moore or Cortland Sutton? I don't think we did. I've got Sutton higher than Moore. Gus Edwards or David Montgomery? I believe I have Montgomery ranked higher in PPR. Tua or Cousins this week? Would you Cousins. drop Tua to pick up Cousins also? Yes. Because it's just for a bye week replacement. Yep. So here's the move. Make that move to get Cousins because you really only need it for this week. You should feel better going with Cousins than you would if, uh, Tua. And then after this week, see if you can trade Kirk Cousins. There's going to be somebody who's going to want him, even in a 10-team league. I think I would go with Tua, but I, I they're back-to-back. It's 8-9 and nine in my ranking. So, How many uh, interceptions do you think Tua should have had last, last week? Oh, a lot. I mean, he's like fifth in... I think he's fifth in potential interceptions or whatever the stat is called, and he's only played like three and a half games. It's right. It's been a little erratic, but yes. still a lot of upside there. I think they call uh, it interception worthy throws. Yes, there you go. Tom Brady Rolls will have four touchdowns. Time. I'd like to see that. The prediction uh, has been noted. Gus or Amari Cooper at the flex? Cooper in full PPR. I think so too. Yeah, he he had a touchdown last week. And Cooper got did? Yeah, called yeah. back for offensive pass interference. It would have been. Well, the, I mean, you uh, can't push off. You just yeah, that was, it was bad. Um, Judy Singletary or Christian Kirk? Full PPR this week. I believe I have Kirk ranked the highest of the three. I will double check for you. It would, it, it would come down to Kirk or Singletary. I have Kirk ranked higher. Please stop stam- spamming the chat. I know it makes you, th- th- you, you think it's the only way you're going to get your question answered. But I, I can be a spiteful uh, moderator, and it makes me want to answer your questions less. So I'm going to call out Dude, Chris Pena here. We've just answered one of your questions Chris. earlier. Okay. So, yeah, don't spam good. it. It makes the experience worse for everyone. Grade my trade. Trade one of Cook, Pierce, Stevenson, Mostert, Najee, and Gus for a wide receiver upgrade, too. Well, that's not really grading your trade it's asking for trade advice no, he's saying give me trade life uh, give me trade life okay I, that's that's on me i read it wrong it's all uh, good no who's the one to trade from this bunch yeah i would probably say well you're not going to get jack squatty for naji yeah i think Mostert or gus if after this week if gus has a good game i think those are two good candidates maybe your plan should be start building trade talks tonight if Gus does well, he's the one you move first. If he stinks, trade Mostert. See if Spain you can get a good wide receiver. I like it. All right. Uh, Latavius Murray or Brian Robinson? Full PPR. I like Robinson better than Murray. How many more questions we got? We got time for some rapid fire? We'll do, yeah, three more questions. Why don't we do more rapid fire, and then we'll we'll kick out of here. Five more, Whatever. All right, grade my trade. Traded Najee and Gus for St. Amon Ross St. Brown. You win. Great job. 
trade Kittle for Fryermuth? I'd rather start- have Kittle. Yes, you'd rather have. rather start Kittle, rather have Kittle on my team. Start Fryermuth or Waller at the flex. Waller, Fryermuth. I think, did practice limited yesterday. And I believe he practiced again today. Okay. Fryermuth is who I would go with. Trade Justin Herbert for Tom Brady and T. Higgins. Love it. Trade Justin Jefferson for Chris Olave and DeAndre Swift. Mm, I feel like it's a little light. I could double yeah. check the trade chart, but it feels a little light. Unless you're getting Justin Jefferson, then I feel like yeah, it's I'd rather have the Justin Jefferson side. Gus Edwards or Devontae Smith and half PPR? Devontae. Brady or Geno? Brady. Colts or Titans DST? Titans. Should I trade CD Lamb for Kenneth Walker and Chris Godwin? Yes. I, would, I think I'd rather have Godwin rest of the season than Lamb. It's really close, but. And now you're Kenneth getting Walker. Kenneth Walker on top yeah. of it. That You are Superman if you make that trade. Accept or deny Josh Jacobs and CD Lamb for Brady, McCaffrey, and Bateman. Woo. Uh, I think it's going to be really close, but I think the Jacobs side may come out. Yeah, they might be even on the trade chart, but I think the Jacobs Lamb side might be a little lower. McCaffrey's crazy high on the trade chart. Should I trade Brian Robinson for Deontay Johnson? How badly do you need a bad receiver? Uh, he has Keenan Allen on a bye and DK Metcalf hurt. He has depth at RB. I would do it. Aim aim for a higher receiver than Deontay Johnson. And it's non-PPR. Ugh. No. Aim for a better receiver than Deontay Johnson. All right. We need to pick up a defense. Are you dropping Geno Smith, Mike Williams, <laughs> or Rashad Bateman in non-PPR? Bye-bye, Geno. Yeah, I think you dropped Geno. If you're not starting him. Um, ba, ba, ba. sorry, it's hard to do rapid fire when you have to find the questions. Jamal Williams, Antonio Gibson, or Chuba Hubbard? PPR, pick one. Uh, plan on Jamal. If yeah. Hubbard were healthy, he would be the pick. But plan That's on fair. Jamal. Yeah. Need a wide receiver too. Michael Thomas, George Pickens, Wandale Robinson, or Jerry Judy. It doesn't seem like Michael Thomas is going to be that guy. So I think Pickens, Judy. Wandale, or Judy. You just Judy. go with Judy. I would go with Jude. All right, we're going to do one more question. Let's make it a good one. Grade the trade. I give up Travis Etienne for T. Higgins. You win. All right. That's going to do it for the FFT Thursday afternoon Q&A. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for hitting like. Thanks for subscribing. Did we get 500 back. likes? Did we get 500 likes? I don't likes? think we got 500 likes. No, I think you're going to have to keep the shirt on. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. I know we wanted to see it, but we're not going to get it today. Maybe next time. Uh, uh, yeah, make idea. sure you subscribe to the Fantasy Football Today YouTube channel. I will be back with Q&A later tonight, tonight after the Thursday Night Football game if you want to join me for some after-dark talk. And uh, other than that, we'll see you later. Bye.